is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at two, relatively speaking, affordable Android smartphones on T-Mobile, the MyTouch and the MyTouch Q with QWERTY keyboard, both made by LG. So these are two moderately affordable Android smartphones available on T-Mobile, and they're in the MyTouch line. That's T-Mobile's brand for mm, a variety of phones, actually, over a period of time. They've gone as high as the MyTouch 4G and 4G Sly, which are pretty high-end phones. And, they all feature things like the Genius button. You can see there's a Software Genius button right here. There's a Hardware Genius button here, and that brings up a Nuance Voice Command on steroids kind of feature. You can use Voice Command to control your phone. You can even have it read messages aloud to you, and you can compose text messages, which is nice. And there are more tips throughout the operating system to tell you what things do. So T-Mobile really aims these at folks who are probably getting into their first Android smartphone. They sell for $79 with contract, which is pretty reasonable, and the hardware is decent. These are made by LG. Previous MyTouch models have been made by HTC, so this is LG's first foray into the MyTouch line. And obviously we've got one that's a QWERTY slider here and one that's a bar phone. The QWERTY slider is called the MyTouch Q and the bar phone is just called the MyTouch. Now they have a lot in common besides being the same price and that's why we're doing this review together and we'll discuss what's different about them as we get into it as well. But what's in common for starters is they both run on a 1 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon single core CPU. Again, for $79, you're not going to get some dual core action here. And that's a, a second generation Snapdragon with Adreno 205 graphics. It's an okay performer. Actually, it's the standard CPU GPU used on Windows phones, but those are very highly optimized to run in those CPU, so you get a lot speedier performance than you do out of the same processor in these phones. Both of them have 4G HSPA Plus on T-Mobile's network, and of course they have 3G as well, and they're quad-band GSM phones. They both have Wi-Fi calling and Wi-Fi hotspot features, and they have rear 5-megapixel cameras. The MyTouch bar phone has a front video chat camera as well, which the MyTouch Q does not. Both have 512 megs of RAM and 2 gigs of internal storage with about almost a, a gig free for your use. They have the usual Bluetooth and flash. The, in fact, they have Bluetooth 3.0 and a GPS as well. They also have micro SD card slots under the back covers, and a 2 gig card is included with each phone. So let's take a look at them individually. We'll look at the bar phone first, the MyTouch. It's actually a nice looking phone, 3.8 inch AMOLED display, so you get better colors and a little bit more vibrance and, and wider viewing angles relative to the MyTouch Q. It, it feels nice in hand. It's, it's a nice looking phone, especially for the price. You've got soft touch matte black here which is fairly grippy it's reasonably thin and it's fairly light and we've got capacitive buttons here for menu home and back and the light when you touch them up there is no my genius button there but there is a software one right there here's your front video camera and up here we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack the micro usb port under a little door gives you a power button nothing on that side this is where you grab it to yank the battery door off. And here's your volume controls here. So pretty simple design. And there's your 5 megapixel rear main camera. And if we rip the back off, you can see inside, we've got the SIM card slot, the micro SD card slot right there, and the 1500 milliamp battery. They both have 1500 milliamp batteries. And there's your speaker right there. Both phones run Android OS 2.3 Gingerbread, and they've got LG's customizations this time instead of HTC's, and we actually like it pretty well. You can see here that we've got groupings, and this is, LG's been doing this with a lot of their phones lately, so you can actually organize stuff as you see fit. You can create your own groups in here to speed up finding things, and if you've got a big old drawer you don't need, you can actually pinch and close it so you can get through things quicker. You just tap on something to open it up again. So it's pretty nice, and by default you get recent, things you've downloaded, and all applications right here. You get a pretty good software bundle on this. Of course, you get all the usual T Mobile applications like their 411 and T Mobile Caller ID, T Mobile TV, which works pretty well. We'll take a look at the, that, T Mobile Mall. And we've got some LG stuff. We've got their Smart Share DLNA, which works pretty well. We've got Slacker Radio on board, Tetris, a couple of other games. Adobe Flash, which of course you can download from the market anyway, the YouTube player. Quick video chat is included since it has a front video chat camera. Social networking clients like Twitter. So there you have it. So it's a pretty decent software bundle on board. Now let's take a look at the MyTouch Q. 
This guy is obviously going to be a little bit heavier. In fact, it's about an ounce heavier, but it feels kind of good in your hand. It feels weighty and it feels strong. The first thing I'm going to focus on is the keyboard here. Wow, this is one of the nicest keyboards I've used in a while. Large, bubbly keys, which means you can really feel which one you're on. They all slope downward, so you know. You've got handy shortcut buttons here for menu and text messaging symbols, smileys, you know, all that kind of stuff. Shortcuts to the web browser, a .com button. It's really, and it has great tactile feedback, too. Just a really nice large keyboard to type on. And 3.5 inch display here, much like the original T-Mobile Android smartphone, the G1. And so therefore the keyboard is roomy, but it's not such a big phone that people with small hands will have to struggle to try to reach the inner keys. Even have an elongated space bar here. Just pretty good stuff. Slider has a nice solid feel to it. Doesn't feel cheap in the least bit. And it's a pretty generic looking phone from the front. You've got four capacitive touch buttons here for menu, home, back, and then the genius button. I'll show you what it does there. First time it runs you through a tutorial, so you know what you can do with the genius button. And you've got call, send test me message, navigate, search, stuff like that. So it's pretty handy for voice control. Same launcher style Android OS version, so we've got the soft launcher here, and if you tap on it, you can see the same collapsible list of applications here. Same apps are bundled, including Polaris Office on both, and you can actually create new documents with Polaris Office as well, so that's a nice value added for a relatively affordable phone, and certainly with the QWERTY keyboard, it becomes perhaps more useful. Over on the side here, you can see it's thicker because it is a slider, but it's not super duper chunky or anything like that either, not bad. Here's your micro USB port, not covered on this one, the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, power button, microphone hole up here, volume controls, a similar design to the MyTouch. Here's your speaker grill here, your 5 megapixel camera with your LED flash, and if we take off the back cover, SIM card slot, micro SD card slot, and again the 1500 milliamp battery, the same one that's used in the MyTouch Q. Now here's the MyTouch Q's fatal flaw. This has a real old-school half VGA display. That means 320 by 480 pixels. Again, like the original G1. Hardly any phone runs at such a low resolution anymore. And it's just a very average quality TFT LCD display, which means viewing angles are pretty poor on it. It doesn't have super great colors. It doesn't have high contrast. You're not going to see as much on the screen either if you're using something like, say, the web browser. And we'll check that out. And now we're visiting our own website, so you can see what it looks like. And you get a reasonable amount of stuff on the screen, but obviously it's zoomed way out to fit it on there, so nothing is really very readable except for the big headlines. So you're going to spend a lot of time tapping to zoom and reflow the text or otherwise pinch and zoom, which it supports just fine. And the speed is reasonably good on this. Overall, both of these phones feel a little bit laggy to me, but that's to be expected with the old single-core CPU that they're using. It's tolerable stuff, you know, but if you're looking for a super high-end performance and the fastest phone possible, these guys are not going to be the phone for you. Can play Adobe Flash. Though our display is not even 480p. We'll check it out at the 360p resolution and see how it goes. And this is streaming over T-Mobile's HSPA Plus 4G network. And you can hear the speaker whose volume and quality is just okay. We got some frame drops going on there. So it popped out the full screen. It's doing a reasonable job. The controls are a little bit fussy with the single core CPU. We can see some occasional frame drops, but overall, it's certainly usable. And hey, it's certainly better than no flash at all, isn't it? And here we're looking at our site now on the MyTouch, not the MyTouch Q. And this is an 800 by 480 pixel resolution, which is a lot nicer. You get to see more on screen, and it's a bit sharper display too. Same pinch zooming support, same Adobe Flash, and again you can see it's a little bit laggy here, and if you do things like fiddle with settings or tap on the URL to get up the keyboard, you, you might see a little bit of delay there, but it's certainly it's a usable phone, especially if you're on a budget or if it's your first smartphone. 
In terms of multimedia, you get T-Mobile TV. We'll check that out in a minute. And, of course, the built-in YouTube player is there. You can also load Netflix on both of these bad boys. And it's for call quality and reception, they both have pretty good reception. Definitely average to better than average on T-Mobile. And call quality on the MyTouch Q, the QWERTY guy, wow, very nice call quality. Clear and sharp on both ends, pretty good volume. And the, the MyTouch bar phone, well, just okay call quality. It's not terrible or anything like that, but it's not as impressively sharp and clear as the slider is. Why don't we take a look at T-Mobile TV now. So now we're in T-Mobile TV, which is a pretty nice app. It costs you 10 bucks a month if you want to use it. You do get a 30-day trial to give it a go. And it does on-demand, and it does streaming TV stuff. You get a lot of popular TV shows on here. And let's check out one now. So you can see the quality. And we're going to play this over HSPA plus 4G. So pretty good quality, pretty good streaming. Not the world's brightest display, even at maximum brightness, but not bad. That's T-Mobile TV. Battery life on both of these guys, not too bad. T-Mobile lists uh, surprisingly pessimistic 3.3 hours of talk time. Now, LG phones in general, looking at the Nitro HD on AT&T, for example, tend to shoot more, it seems like, for performance and battery optimization, but that said, both of these phones did last us through a day on a charge with moderate use. They don't have anything that's so greedy for power like dual-core CPUs or huge displays or LTE or anything like that. So they, they should be fine. 1,500 milliamps is a reasonably adequate battery capacity for these phones. Now, in terms of gaming, I... It's going to be a bit harder to find games for the MyTouch Q at this point, given its relatively low resolution display. Most phones are 800 by 40 pixels these days, and games really are optimized for particular display resolutions, but you should be able to find some casual games to play on there, and even the occasional 3D game, maybe. You'll have a wider selection with the MyTouch, but the limiting factor on both of these guys is going to be the single-core CPU. Now, there's plenty of games out there that will run, including casual games, but you're not going to be playing cutting-edge Tegra Zone games, obviously, on these phones. So that's the T-Mobile MyTouch and the MyTouch Q. Both are available now for $79.99 with a contract, obviously, on T-Mobile. Phones are made by LG. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.